Now let's look at the second mechanism, which is the countercurrent exchange system. And what we are trying to do with this system is to maintain the concentration gradient that was established by the countercurrent multiplier. Now remember, the countercurrent multiplier basically increased the concentration gradient of the interstitial fluid. Okay, so we have a high uh, concentration or a high osmotic pressure within that area. And what that does is it helps to pull water from the descending limb of the loop. The ascending limb, we actively pump out the sodium, potassium, and chloride into the inner. That's, that's creating the osmotic gradient. So now we need to maintain it. Now, if you go back into the earlier video where I was showing you the vasorecta, the vasorecta is what's going to apply here. So if we look at this picture on here, um, the picture on the left, this is talking about the counter current multiplier. So you can see uh, the nephron loop in this area. Okay, so that's referring to the nephron loop. We're looking at the right picture. And so we have the nephron loop in the center. Those are kind of faded out, but we have the vasorecta, which is the highlighted red blood vessel or that capillary. Counter current, just as with the other one, refers to the opposite flow. Okay, so in this case, the blood flow of these capillaries runs opposite of the flow of the filtrate and the tubular fluid, okay? So you remember the tubular fluid is going up the ascending limb, down the descending. Blood that parallels all this, blood is flowing in the opposite direction. So the capillary that's next to the ascending limb that blood flow is flowing down, okay, as you can see by those arrows. And the capillary that's next to the descending limb, that blood flow is moving up, okay. And the exchange component, what that's referring to is we're essentially just exchanging water and salts between the plasma in the blood and the interstitial fluid. Okay, so here's where we're exchanging. So if we start on the kind of the ascending limb and the descending portion of the vasorecta, now the movement of water and salts are going to be concentration gradient based. Okay, so we know that the interstitial fluid out in this area has a very high concentration of salt at 1200. Can't really read that very well, but that's a 1200. Okay, milliosmoles, and water follows salt. So here water is just saying, hey, there is more salt on the outside of this blood vessel than on the inside. Okay, so water is going to leave the blood vessel. Kind of go back into where we're talking about the capillaries and how water leaks, and we have the hydrostatic pressures and the osmotic pressures. Remember all that, same things apply here. Here, water is leaving the capillary and enters the interstitial spaces and becomes part of the uh, extracellular fluid or the interstitial fluid. And because we have a high concentration of salt in the interstitial fluid and a lower concentration salt within the plasma, salt is moving into the blood vessel. So. Here, we've got water coming out of the blood vessel, as it shows on this one, and salt going into the blood vessel, okay? Now the blood vessel loops around. Now the vasorecta capillary is going to be going into the ascending portion of it, and we're just going to reverse this process. Because we've added a lot of salt on the right-hand side of this picture, now we have a lot of salt in the blood vessel and we want to get uh, we want to get rid of it so salt is going to be now coming out of the blood vessel while water's going in so the water and salt are just reversed on each side so if we're to split this down in two on the ascending side and by ascending I am referring to the loop of Henley okay 
So here we're losing water. Water comes out of the blood vessel, not the nephron loop. Water is coming out of the blood vessel. Salt is going in. On the ascending side, we are bringing water back into the blood vessel and pulling salt away. Now this helps to maintain that osmotic pressure, which is necessary for antidiuretic hormone. The last thing I want to talk about is the third component of maintaining the concentration gradient of the interstitial fluid, and that's going to be urea recycling.